Welcome to Woodvale. Thank you so much for being with us today. If you are a first time guest today, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to Woodvale. Please visit our website and fill out a connect card. We would love the opportunity to connect with you and get to know you. If you are here on site with us today, drop by one of the guest tables in the lobby after the service. There's a group of hosts there who are excited to meet you and answer any questions you have. We have a gift card waiting for you to a coffee shop and we will be making a donation to Chio on your behalf just as a way of saying thanks for being with us today. As we begin our time together today in worship, I'd like to encourage you to turn your focus to Jesus for all that he is and all the wonderful things he has done. He is worthy of our praise, amen? Wherever you are today, whether you're joining us on site or online, I invite you to stand to your feet and join us now in a time of worship. Good morning, church. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning, where we give God all of our praise, amen? Come on, I hope you're ready to worship with us this morning, come on. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison doors He parted the raging sea My God, he holds the victory There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today But we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is sure from that grave my God still rolling stones away there's joy in the house of the Lord there's joy in the house of the Lord today and we won't be quiet we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the Lord our God is surely in this place we won't be quiet we shout the beggars but now we're royalty we were the prisoners and now we're running free we were forgiven accepted or redeemed by his grace so let the house of the lord sing praise come on together we were the beggars but now we're There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Come on. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Oh, our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Come on. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Four. 
whisper when the darkness falls it won't prevail cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail oh my God will never fail come on and I'm gonna see your victory There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. Come on, we're not backing down. And I'm not backing down from any giant. Because I know how this story ends. Yes, I know. Oh, I know how this story ends.
the battle belongs I'm gonna see a victory come on this morning right now for the battle belongs to you Lord yes God we believe in victory this morning Lord because the battle has been won Father the battle is yours Lord we don't fight this on our own so God we claim victory right now in the name of Jesus Come on, you lift up your hands this morning if you need a victory. God, we claim it right now, Lord. God, you're turning around for good. The battle belongs to you, Lord. The battle is yours, Lord. We don't fight on our own. We claim victory. circumstance, Father. Right now, Father, we pray for whatever the need is, Lord. God, whether it's sickness, Lord, or God, marriages that need to be restored, mental illness, Father. Whatever it is, Father, we claim victory in the name of Jesus. Because we serve a God who's alive and is still king on the throne this morning. Amen, church. Thank you, Jesus. Because this is a house of worship. This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name And this is a house of healing And our hearts are full of faith and you have our full attention you have the final say oh come alive in the name of Jesus come alive in the name of Jesus this is a house of miracles we bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Yes, this is a house. Signs and wonders, Lord. Because there's resurrection. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over. Even the coldest grave. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is Bring everything to the feet of 
Come on. Oh, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything. Everything. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything right to the feet of Jesus. Come on. miracles happen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. God, we still believe you're working, Lord. Still believe it, Father. I just feel like taking a moment right now. If that's you, if you need a miracle in your life, can you lift up your hand this morning if you're comfortable with that? We believe what we sing this morning, amen, church? He is a God of miracles, and we still believe it in the name of Jesus, amen? So if you need a miracle right now, lift up your hand. If you see someone around you, we're not allowed to lay our hands on people right now, but you just reach out. Reach out to people around you if you see that right now. Let's take a moment in his presence. And God, we lay it at the feet of Jesus this morning. God, we come in the name of Jesus this morning. God, we claim victory over these things, Father. Whatever the circumstance is, Lord. God, we still believe that you are alive and you are well, Lord. God, we believe in miracles, God. We believe in the power of Jesus this morning. Amen, church. Because I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're working. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. I believe you're working. All things for good. Come on, come alive. We sing, come alive. In the name of Jesus, come alive. In the name of 
Because this is a house of miracles. That's right. We bring everything. Come on, bring it right now to the feet of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Yes, Father, we believe it right now, Lord. God, you are alive and well this morning. God, we come into your presence, Lord, declaring that, God, you are alive and well. You are moving among us, moving in this church, Lord, moving in this city, moving in our families, we pray. We believe it this morning. Amen, church. Come on. Come on, let him hear you this morning, church. We believe it. Thank you, Lord. We praise your powerful name this morning, God. We love to be in your presence, Lord, worshiping you. And we love you, Father. We love you. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Well, you guys can take your seats now and take a look at the screens. Hello, Woodvale. Thank you for being with us today. As your treasurer and on behalf of the church board, I want to thank you for the giving of your tithes and offerings this past year. Our church would not be able to make the impact that it has made to the people in our community without your generous giving. Today, I want to remind you about a little something we do around this time here at Woodvale. It's called the Love Offering. As we enter the Christmas season, consider participating in the Love Offering. It's a tradition at Woodvale to show our appreciation to our pastors and our church staff for all the hard work they've done throughout the year. It's a great way to say thank you to our church leadership. However you choose to give, please remember to indicate Love Offering 2021 you have from now until December 19th to participate in the Love Offering. Be blessed, Woodvale. Thank you. Hello, I'm Yvonne, and I'm so glad to be in church with you today. Join us tonight at 6 p.m. for a very special all-church prayer night. This is an intergenerational Unite gathering where we will be having a time of prayer, communion, and water baptisms. Please register on our website to join us on-site this evening. We will be delivering Christmas dinner hampers on Saturday, December 18th, and we need your help. If you'd like to participate in preparing hampers or delivering them, please register on our website. To see the list of food items needed, you will find a list of donations we are accepting on the home page of our website. You may also make a donation of $60 simply by visiting our website or a kiosk in the lobby and noting Christmas dinner hamper on your envelope or online giving form. If you came prepared to give today, there are several different ways for you to give at Woodvale. Head over to our website and click on the Give button to see six different ways of giving at Woodvale. If you are on site with us today, there are debit machines in the lobby and offering buckets available as you leave the auditorium at the end of the service. Today is our monthly Missions Focus Sunday. Woodville actively supports 26 global workers. You can find all the details on our church website by clicking on Outreach followed by Missions. Your ongoing faithful giving above your tithes to missions is much appreciated and needed. We now have a brief testimony from one of our global partners, Jericho Road Ministries here in Ottawa, followed by the preaching of God's Word. I didn't want to hurt them, but I needed the money to get high. Um, you know, stealing, uh, working every day, and, but at the same time, I'd get paid and my money would be gone the next day. I was able to stop using drugs and drinking, but I wasn't able to stay stopped. I was still very selfish and self-centered, very jealous. And, uh, you know, my, I still ruined a lot of relationships, even though I had stopped drinking and using drugs. Um, coming into Jericho this time, I, you know, took some direction and started doing the steps and started getting down to the root cause of why I was drinking and using drugs. And today I have some hope in my life. Um, you know, I don't have to live in, in the past and I don't have to be in fear of the future every day. They just gave me some direction on how I can look back at, at my life and see what went wrong and uh, how, how, I could, how, I, how I could correct it. Uh, I live in today, finally. Um, that took some time and that took uh, a lot of mistakes made uh, down the path of my life but today I'm able to uh, to let those things go and live in today and I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful for Jericho Road.
Well, good morning to each and every one of you. It is so good to see all of you here today. Can we give it up for all of our first-time guests? Come on, let all our first-time guests know how glad we are that you're here. And thank you, guests, for choosing to be here today. We hope that you fully enjoy your experience today. And at the end of the service, we invite you to drop by a guest table at an exit point. We have a coffee card for you, our way of saying thank you for coming and joining today. It's a gift for you. Also, on your behalf, we're making a donation to Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario. And a shout-out welcome to all who are watching online today, our church family and friends from across Canada and from around the world who have joined today. How many of you people are ready for God's Word? Come on, are you ready for God's Word? Next Sunday, we're beginning a, a Christmas sermon series. We're calling it Rediscover Christmas. But this morning, we want to conclude our unshakable sermon series. We've been taking four Sundays to explore an unexplored book, the book of 2 Thessalonians. And we've been digging in and finding some truths that we can apply to our lives and today, in this final message, I want to invite you to get your Bible out and turn with me, please, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I want to walk you through this morning, verse 6 down to verse 18, and I think it's going to become clear why Paul wrote these words, but I need to tell you, the latter verses in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 are so powerful. I honestly can't wait to come to these final verses, because I really believe it's going to bring hope and encouragement and help to each and every one of you today. I want to break this message into two parts. And the first thing I want to share with you, number one, is six, six ways just to remain busy and occupied for Jesus. And I'm going to dive into why Paul wrote these words to the church in Thessalonica in a moment. But the application is God wants us to be busy for Jesus, especially in this, these days of turbulence and difficulty. So let me share with you these six thoughts. Number one, the first thing I want to point out, Paul calls the Thessalonian believers to keep away from people who were idle. And they weren't just idle, they were really disruptive. We're going to see what their disruption was in a few moments, but they were idle, they were, they were lazy, and, and they were avoiding the things that they should be doing, and they were becoming very disruptive in the life of the church. Let me read to you verse 6. In verse 6, it begins, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you. Now, the first thing I want to point out, that in the original Greek, it actually begins with, we command you. We command you, then in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul picks up the analogy of a military term where the, the superior is calling the soldiers into rank to, to line up and, and get in line and be the way you should be. Get, get in order, get in rank, and follow suit. We command you. Not just in our name, but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know the answer, but allow me to ask, ask the question this morning. How many people want to honor Jesus in your life? That's you. Lift up your hand. Do you want to honor Jesus? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away, which means to avoid. It means don't spend too much time with these people. Don't make them a major part of your life. Avoid Every believer, he's not talking about unbelievers, but every believer who specifically is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teachings you receive from us. You can write down 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, because Paul addressed this issue in his first letter in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 11, and then he picked it up in chapter 5 of his first letter, verse 14, and, and he calls them to, to stay away from the idle and the disruptive. Now, if you were living back in those days, you would have the influence, if you were of Jewish background, from your Jewish culture. And Jewish culture had, had, had a whole thought wave that if you, weren't, if you weren't really studying the Talmud and studying the ancient manuscripts, you weren't really doing something worthy. In fact, they looked at people who were working in the secular realm as not as important as those who were studying the Talmud and studying the ancient manuscripts. They, they had a spiritual attitude, and that was infiltrating the Thessalonian church. But there's another group of people that had Greek in their culture. If you had a Greek background, there was a superior attitude that permeated the culture of that day. And it's a sad attitude, but they, they thought work is only for the slaves and the servants 
Not for we Greek people, we're superior. There's a little bit of that infiltrating the church, but I, I want to show you that this morning that it, it wasn't really an issue of the spiritual attitude, and it, and it wasn't even an issue of the, of, the, of, the, of the whole superior attitude. It was an issue of a group of people that really misunderstood and misapplied Paul's teachings on the soon coming return of Jesus. They misunderstood the second coming thought. They were so convinced that Jesus was coming back right then in their day, in the next few months, so they all were quitting their jobs and saying, we're not going to work, and we're just going to sit on a mountain, and we're just going to hang out and wait for Jesus to come back. It wasn't a superior attitude, and it wasn't the spiritual attitude. It was the, it was the, it was the, the, the soon return or the second coming of Jesus' attitude. And they quit their jobs, and they got lazy, and they became disruptive. And they were, they were going to all the believers, trying to get them to think the way they thought. Why are you working? Just quit your job because Jesus is coming back soon, and you just need to just wait for the return of Jesus. And Paul had to correct that misunderstanding and that misapplication. And so he called the Thessalonian believers to stay away from the idol and the disruptive. Let me take you to number two. Follow the example of hard workers. Follow the example of hard workers. And let me read to you verse 7 down to verse 9. Because Paul was calling the Thessalonian believers to follow the example that they were living out. Because they had a, a real strong work ethic. Watch this. Verse 7. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. Paul said, just follow me, Paul. Follow Timothy who's with me. Follow Silas. Follow, follow our example. We weren't idle when we were with you. Look at verse 8. We didn't eat anyone's food without paying for it. We weren't freeloaders. We didn't take you out for a burger and say we're going to pay and go, where did I put my wallet? They weren't freeloaders. We didn't eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we work night and day. Oh, my goodness, the work ethic of Paul and Silas and Timothy. Night and day, laboring and toiling so that we wouldn't be a burden to any of you. Verse 9, we did this not because we did not have the right to such help. Oh, yeah, they had the right to get the financial help with the believers. But no, 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 they were trying to set a real strong example to them. Verse 9, we did this not because we didn't have the right for such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. You ever seen the bumper sticker? A bad day fishing is better than a good day at work. You know, I owe, I owe, I owe. So off to work I go. It's funny how work gets a bad name. I've had some people say, well, when I read the Bible, work came with the curse. No, 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 it didn't, folks. God modeled it. For six days, he worked in creation. And then on the seventh day, he had a Sabbath of rest. He commands us in Exodus to work for six days and then have our Sabbath. And not just that, he took Adam and Eve and he placed them in the garden to work the ground. And it was beautiful and it was redeemed and it was fun and it was energized and it was awesome and then sin came into the world and when sin came into the world the beauty of work got tainted with the thorns and the thistles and some believers go work came with the curse no it didn't because of sin the beauty of work was lost I, 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 I just need to say to the house this morning and I believe in the importance of a Sabbath and my Sabbath is a Friday where, where most pastors take a Monday off but Friday is a day of rest for Mark and Evelyn and we love it and we enjoy it and we need it and we must model it. But church, before a Sabbath, sometimes we need to talk about work. We need to have a good, strong work ethic. I believe that Christians in their job should give their best. Come on, is there a little witness in the house today? Give their best. Show up on time. Give your all. Be all in. But not just that. Could it be? <laughs> and I know the answer is yes. 
That God has put you just where he wants you to be to use your gifts and talents, but not just your gifts and talents, but your workplace becomes like your mission field to be a lighthouse for Jesus Christ. And so if we don't have a good work ethic, our testimony won't be solid. And the gospel may not be received. And so Paul says to the Thessalonians, follow our example of hard workers. But then there's number three. Let's go to number three. Number three. Work, honestly, is the responsible thing to do. Let's dive into verse 10 down to verse 12. For Paul said, work is the responsible thing to do. For even when we were with you, we, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work should not eat. Please underline the word unwilling, and please note it doesn't say unable. It says unwilling. Oh, there's friends in our church family that you're, you're unable to work. There's a medical condition that you can't work, and that's not what he's talking about. And there's another group of people in, in any church family, oh, they really wish they could work, and, but they can't because this reason or that reason, and it's tough. And, and I'll tell you, sometimes when we got to watch ourselves, when we're, and you see it even now in our area of Ottawa, but more so downtown Ottawa, where someone is holding out a cup, asking for money just to get, get a coffee or to put a sandwich in their stomach. And, and sometimes as believers, we can go, why are are they so lazy? Why don't they just get a job like the rest of us? And we judge, and we don't know the real story. We don't know what brought them to this difficult, dark point. And I would just say to the house, let's not be judgmental in the name of Jesus. Because there's people that's not they're unwilling, they're unable. And Paul deals with this, and, and, and he says... For even when we were with you, we gave you, this, we gave you this rule that the one who is unwilling to work should not eat. Verse 11, we hear, uh, we got word that some among you are idle and disruptive. Idle, lazy, disruptive, putting their nose into places that shouldn't be. They are not busy, they're busy bodies. You, you, you all know what a busy body is, eh? They meddle, they meddle, they meddle. Too much time on their hands. You got too much time on your hands, you start doing things you shouldn't be doing, and you meddle, you meddle, you meddle, 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 meddle. And these believers were meddling because they're saying, we're not going to work. We're just going to sit back. We're just going to hang back and wait. We hear some of you are idle and disruptive. They're not busy. They're busybodies, first of all. Such people, we command. Whoa. There's that military term, get back into rank. And we urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. Don't be disruptive. Set an example. Let's go to number four. Number four has got so many layers to it, but let me just give it to you very quickly. Do the right thing even when others don't. Do what's right even when the others aren't doing what's right. Always do what's right. Do not feel you got to go with the majority. Oh, come on. Is there a little witness in the house today? The majority can lead you down a dark, desperate, difficult, wrong path. Do what is honoring to Jesus. Do this right, even when others don't. Look at verse 13. As for you. So Paul switches gears. Now he talks to all the believers who do it. You know, as for all of you who aren't the idle and disruptive, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Don't get weary. Stay the course. Stay strong. Some of you are like, I go to work. I'm good. I got the work ethic thing down patch. But so-and-so at my workplace, they're always late. They always, they don't work. They take a, take a three-hour lunch break, and it's horrible. And, and they're the ones that got the promotion. Where's Jesus in all this? I'll tell you where he is. He's still on the throne. Amen. Don't you look at everyone else. You just keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep doing what is right. You keep being faithful. Well, everyone else is doing it. Doesn't mean you got to do it. 
I worked in a grocery store when I was a teenager in Cambridge, and I saw some things going on that, that mortified me. They were, they were taking, they were taking their, their lunch from the freezer in the middle of the night, not paying for it and eating it, and they were, they were, they were stealing left and right, and well, we, work, we, work, we work the night shift. We deserve this. You know that entitlement thing? And the boss came in one night and fired every single one of them. I'm glad I didn't get caught in that mess. I'm glad that I stayed the course. I'm glad that my father and my mother instilled a deep work ethic in me to give it my best at all times and focus on Jesus and keep doing what is right no matter what. Come on, is there a little witness in the house today? That's the attitude God calls us to. Number five, three steps in dealing with this, three steps. What's the game plan that Paul lined out in the context of what was going on? It's all about church discipline. Oh my goodness, we don't like that thing, church discipline. Many believers go, well, we just let Holy Spirit deal with those things. You ever think Holy Spirit wants to work through you and I to deal with those things? Did Holy Spirit deal with David? Yeah. When he sinned with Bathsheba, how did he do it? He sent Nathan, the prophet. Nathan wasn't some random person that David didn't know. They knew each other. They were in relationship. And and the deeper the relationship, probably the stronger and better it will be for you to live out principles of discipline. And so he, now discipline is not punishment. Spiritual discipline always has the goal of restoration. It's not about you're horrible, you're awful, I'm tired, I'm sick of you. No, church Discipline is always about restoration, not punishment. All right, so let me give you the three steps. Number one, the plan. These three points are brought to you by the letter P. The plan. Verse 14, take special note of anyone who does not obey our instructions in this letter. Hmm, 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 hmm. Take note. Just, just beware. Who are they? Number two, the process. We don't like this one. But Paul said to the church at Thessalonica, do not associate with them. Don't spend your time with them. Don't feed their dysfunction. (laughs) Don't make them feel good about what they're doing, which is wrong. Don't let them feel like you're condoning their action. And the only, Holy Spirit said to Paul, do not associate with them. Now, what's the purpose? The plan, the process, the purpose. In order that they may feel ashamed. Now, Christianity, we don't like that word, ashamed. I don't want anyone to feel shame. I don't want anyone. But there are times when actions have consequences and a church responding accordingly can bring restoration. The plan, the process, the purpose. But then there's number six, and it's a great reminder for all of us. Whatever you do, don't be harsh. Please don't be harsh with those who are messing up. Please don't be harsh. Sometimes we're harsh when we judge people who don't sin the way that we sin. Did you get that? We think their sin is worse than our sin and we judge them and are harsh to them, but they don't sin the way that we sin. So Paul said in verse 15, yeah, do not regard them as an enemy. They're not your enemy. They're your brother. They're your sister. But warn them as you would a fellow believer. Care enough to help them because this isn't going well. And we want you to occupy till Jesus comes. I have a theory and I have a conviction. I believe Jesus is coming back soon. I don't know when, but I believe it's soon. It might be today, it might be tomorrow, it might be this year, it might be next year, it might be in my generation, or it might be in the next generation, or it might even be in the generation after that. What am I saying? I really don't know when he's coming back, but I live every day like today is the day. And if you were to ask me if tonight was the night that Jesus was coming back, what would I do different today? I hope my answer would be absolutely nothing different. And I hope my reason why I would say absolutely nothing different is because every day I'm living like he's coming back today. Does that make sense? 
So if your response, if Jesus was coming back today, you had to do something different, you need to change your theology of the return of Jesus. You need to live every moment like this is the day. Shine for Jesus. Don't go to work and live for the weekend. I can't wait till Friday. Make every day a God day. As you're flipping those burgers, shine for Jesus. As you're making that sale, shine for Jesus. Shine for Jesus. Come on, is there a little witness in the house today? Shine for Jesus. All right, I, I want to pull it together. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to take you to three final prayers. Whoa, this is the best. Because Paul now concludes the letter, and he gives these three final prayers. Number one. A prayer for God's peace. I felt the Holy Spirit say to me that there's going to be many in the house this morning in first and second and third, and many are watching online that you really need a good dose of the peace of God Almighty, a peace that passeth understanding because there's anxiety and there's turmoil and there's fear and it's gripping you. And if you're honest today, it feels like the fear and the anxiety is winning. I rebuke that win in the name of Jesus. I pray that you'd have a, you'd have a, a great covering of God's peace. Look at verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself. Whose peace? Jesus. Who can do it? He himself. Give you peace at all times and in every way. I feel Holy Spirit saying to me that Jesus wants to give you peace tonight when you lay your head on your pillow and your mind is racing. May you experience the peace of God in the name of Jesus. When you get up in the morning and you got to go to work and it's tough to face the day, may you have a good dose of the peace of the Spirit of the living God upon you in the name of Jesus. When you get out of church and you go home and it's lonely and, and there's no one there, may you have a good dose of the peace of the living God in the name of Jesus. When you get up tomorrow and you got to go for your radiation and you're not looking forward to it, would you have a good dose of the peace of God Almighty in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. When you get in your car and you're driving out of this parking lot, would you have a good dose of the peace of the Almighty God in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus? Number two, a prayer for God's presence. You, you think I'm on the flow of pee, don't you? But I'm going to surprise you on number three. A prayer for God's presence. The Lord be with all of you. Paul prayed that for the church of Thessalonica. I pray that the Lord would be with all of you. By the way, when you're a follower of Jesus, he's in you. And where you go, he goes. He's not your MasterCard. You can't leave him at home. He's your savior, he's your redeemer, he's your healer, he's your baptizer, he's your soon coming king, he's your deliverer, he's your everything, he's your all, he's your sweet rose of Sharon, he's the lily of the valley, he's the alpha, he's the omega, he's the beginning, he's the end, wherever you go, he goes, he's with you, he's with you, he's with you, come on Woodville, he's with you, he's with you, he's with you at all times. I want to take you to number three, and I want the worship band and team to come and join me on the platform. The final prayer is a prayer for God's grace. Everybody say grace. One, two, three. Grace. Come on, everybody say it again. One, two, three. Grace. Come on, get on your feet right now. I want to talk to you about grace. I learned an acronym about grace many years ago that G-R-A-C-E, God's Riches at Christ's expense. Grace is what you don't deserve, but you get it anyways. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. But it's given to you freely because of what Jesus has done. Now, I'm going to show you something that I, I, I hope it rings true because every single letter that Paul wrote in the New Testament, he ends the same way. Grace be with you. Grace 
be with you. Watch this. Verse 17, I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is the distinguishing mark in all my letters. And I thought the distinguishing mark in all the letters was that he wrote with his own hand, but there's more to it. The distinguishing mark of his letter is this is how I write. Verse 18. See, we got verses that make you think it ends, but verses are man-made to help you find it in the Bible. This actually links together. I, Paul, write this letter in my own hand good, which is the distinguishing mark in all my letters. This is how I write. What's the distinguishing mark? Not that he wrote in his own hand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. The distinguishing mark of every one of Paul's letters is how we ended it. Grace be with you. I'll tell you what grace is. Grace is a gift of God because of Jesus that you get, but you don't deserve it. It's the favor of God. It's the blessing of God. It's the blessing of God in the name of the Lord. It's the blessing of God. It's something that he deposits in you that flows out of you. Now, here's what I feel the Lord's saying to me. Connect that, Mark, with what he just prayed, his presence and his peace. I don't deserve his peace, but I get his peace. Hallelujah. I don't deserve his presence, but I get his presence. The peace of him and the grace of him is the grace of him. The peace and the presence is the grace of God for you. It's his favor. It's his favor. And I'll tell you, here's what Holy Spirit's been saying to me. We're walking in today. It's a cold day. It's freezing outside. There's a lot going on on planet earth, but God wants to give us grace this morning. Pastor, you started with a song about there's joy in the house of the Lord. Man, I was dancing as you were singing that, and I felt the Spirit of the Lord saying, he wants to give us a good dose of the joy of the living Lord in this house this morning in the name of Jesus. Life is tough. You're feeling down. You're feeling discouraged. You're feeling anxious. You're feeling fearful. You're feeling, how am I going to get through this. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Now, i got a word for you. There's not just joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in you because of his grace that's going to leave with you as you walk out of this building. There's not just joy in this one-hour service. There's joy every single day because of the grace of our almighty God. Woo! Peace. Presence is grace. So grace be with you. Grace be with you. <laughs> Come on, how many people want the grace of God this morning? Grace, 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 grace. So I want there right now to be a little celebration of Holy Spirit in this place. Come on, come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. There's joy in the house of the Lord. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison door He partied the raging sea I got he holds the victory Cause there's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet but We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Come on, we sing. We sing to the God who is. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. And he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Oh, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Oh, our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Oh, we shout your praise. Come on. Because we were the beggars, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. So let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, we're the beggars. We were the beggars, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, but now we are running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. So let the house, come on, of the Lord sing praise. There's joy, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. 
to the Lord today. Come on, we won't. We will be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. In the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. head is bowed, everyone's eyes are closed. And there's two questions I want to ask this morning, and they're both important. But the first question I want to ask, if today was the day that Jesus came back for his church, or if today was the day that you died, and you stepped into eternity, are you ready? Have you personally asked Jesus to be the center of your life? you know that you know that you know that heaven is going to be your home I don't want you to wish or think or be uncertain I want you to walk out of this place today you're watching online I want you to before this service ends I want you to know that you know that you're ready for heaven if you can't answer that question with a definite yes but today you want to settle it and you want Jesus to be the center of your life you want relationship with God through Jesus Christ and you want to be led in a prayer to make him the center of your life I'm just going to count to three heads are bowed eyes are closed and if that's you you want to be led in this prayer I just want you to lift up your hand after I count to three I'm not going to center you out I'm just going to lead you in a prayer but but you lift in your hand you're letting me know that you're you're ready today you want to make your peace with God you don't know that you're ready and you want to be ready and you want to be led in this prayer so one two three if that's you you just lift your hand as high as you can high as you can so I can see it by lifting your hand you're letting me know I want Jesus you can put your hand down yeah you can put your hands down God bless you I want to lead you in this prayer we're gonna join you so let's pray together dear Jesus, dear Jesus come into my life Please forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I've decided to follow you. I've decided to follow you. I make my peace with you today. I make my peace with you today. I receive the gift of salvation. I receive the gift of salvation. I confess you. I confess you. As my savior. As my savior. And my lord. And my lord. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Can we open our eyes right now? Can we have a little party time? Can we, come on, a little party time. Can we celebrate salvation? There are people on site and people watching online that you gave your heart to Jesus. Best decision of your life. And if you don't attend a life-giving, Bible-believing church, we'd be honored if you joined us in the journey. You're on site. You invited Christ in your life. On your way out at exit table, get a Bible. It's free. Get a little booklet called Follow. It's free. We want to get you into our follow class. It's going to help you. Consider getting baptized in water. It's the next step. If you're still checking out Christianity, lots of questions. Sign up for Alpha. This is your church. Get into a connect group. It'll change your life. Trust me. And we got over 70 connect groups across the city. Go to our website. This is your church. Find a place of serving. We have a serve class every month. And People are signing up. It's always seemingly full, and we're able to discover your place of serving and release you into your place of serving. And tonight, everybody say tonight. One, two, three, tonight. Six o'clock. Intergenerational prayer night. Boys and girls. Come on, moms and dad. Bring the boys and girls. Young people, young adults, seniors. It's going to be safe. It's going to be COVID-friendly. We're going to baptize in water tonight. We're baptizing in water next Sunday morning. We're having communion tonight. We're having communion next Sunday morning. Why not? We're going to come and worship. We're going to come pray. I I checked the registration, Brad. Whoa. It's it's probably going to be a full house tonight. I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, I just encourage you to sign up for it. It, It's going to be powerful. I can't wait. I, I need to tell you my most favorite time each month is when we come together for prayer. And God's in the house. God's in the house. Amen. 
just a moment, I'm going to pray, and I'll tell you the second thing I'm going to ask in just a moment. I haven't forgotten. But if you come prepared to give of tithes and offerings, there's buckets in the back, debit machines in the lobby. Go online. Thank you, Woodville, for your ongoing faithful giving. Thank you for the Christmas hampers. You, you know it. You heard it. You're generous. Let's, let's all do it. Let's be a blessing for the kingdom of God. If you like personal prayer, at the end of the service, feel free to come and stand at the front. And someone will come and pray for you personally, COVID-friendly. And uh, again, come tonight. But here's question number two. How many people this morning could use just a little extra measure of the grace of joy and the grace of peace in your life? Anybody this morning? Anybody this morning? I, I just felt the Lord say to me, not that I'm a spiritual giant. I'm just like you. But the Lord has placed me as your lead pastor. And I believe there's something that God would want someone in leadership to do. I just want to pray that the blessing and the grace of God would flow on every single life today. That there be joy, unspeakable, full of glory, peace. So if you need the grace of joy, the grace of his presence, the grace of peace in greater measure today, just lift your hands right now all across this place, front to back, way over in the risers, way up in the balcony. Watching online, lift up your hands. Jesus, I pray grace of joy over everyone right now, in them, through them. Peace, the grace of peace in them and through them, in the name of Jesus. The grace of your presence in them and through them, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that we wouldn't just walk out, that this has been good, but I pray this would be a powerhouse week in the name of the Lord. Grace of peace and joy at work tomorrow. Yeah. Grace, poi, joy, and peace when we go home in the name of the Lord. I pray that you would, you would give us favor and blessing and those gifts of grace in us and through us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray it right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Amen. Now put your hands down. Look this way. Look this way. I'm going to close with this. We're going to land the preaching plane. The Greek word for grace is charas. From the English, we get charity. <laughs> grace is God giving you something that you don't deserve. It's, it's charity because he loves you and because you need it more than you can ever imagine. Grace, grace, grace. Evelyn, I love you so much and we hope you can join us tonight and we can't wait to see you next Sunday as we begin the Rediscover Christmas series. God bless you. Grace of God be with you. Amen.